Hello everyone, I'm Jackie and I'm based in Singapore. I, I understand that there's a lot of you who flew in over here, so a big welcome to all of you to Sunnyside Singapore. And I hope that uh, you all had a chance to eat some of our finest food in the hawker centres around. But don't worry, if you need more recommendations, feel free to swing by the booth that we have and I will tell you about all the greatest and yummiest food to eat. Right? So, um, I, I'm from Angel Hack, so I'll just talk a bit about what Angel Hack is in a bit. And, okay, so today I'm going to talk about how we can leverage uh, OSS to engage, educate, and empower developers. It's quite a mouthful, and I feel, feel like I've uh, bitten more than I could chew. But it's okay, let's see what we can do in the next 15 minutes. Okay, anyways. Um, so before I go, okay, this is this is what my team needs me to say. All right, my, yeah. they have a knife on my throat right now. So a little bit about Angel Hack. Uh, you may or may not have heard it. It's quite an old brand. Uh, it's been around for the past eleven years or so. All right, and it is the world's largest and most diverse global uh, developer ecosystem. Uh, we have around uh, close to. In fact, this is kind of like old statistics. We have more than like three hundred k developers all around the world. And um, as its name suggests, Angel Hack, we started off focusing on hackathons. And to date, we have more than 10,000 projects uh, built on our events. And we have a presence in over 160 countries. And yeah, I hope that some of you might recognize the, the name. Uh, supporting us is a pool of global ambassadors all around the world on campuses. Uh, we Okay, like something that we are, we are, we are trying to start up again. But yeah, we, we, it's very, we are very community focused and a lot of our events are run uh, quite, quite, I guess, in a, in a uh, do I use the word decentralized manner, but uh, everyone does their own thing, right, within their own community. Okay, um, a little bit about myself. So, okay, that's me right over there. I may or may not look like it. <laughs> uh, and... A little bit about myself, I started off as a scientist in biology and then I, I decided to just combine uh, a bit of AI with my research uh, for my PhD. And um, currently I'm the head of product in AngelHack where I run, uh, where I do research, where I ideate and prototype new products and programs to engage developers in communities. Uh, myself, I'm a, I'm a passionate educator even though there's even though I'm, my voice is kind of low, right? Um, I started off with an InsurTech uh, startup. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm also an educator. I'm a jackie of all trades. I wear many hats. Uh, I've, in the recent years, I ran a data uh, science edutech company called UpLevel, where we help uh, learners level up, UpLevel. Uh, we chose UpLevel because level up was taken. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so we, we help them through project-based training and also like apprenticeships. So we work with companies, we put them in, in apprenticeships and help them, you know, get better at what they do. Um, and then, okay, I'm going to skip the blockchain part. I'm not too sure what the ground sentiment is regarding blockchain. Uh, for my work in the startup scene, I um, uh, was a world of 30 under 30, not 30 anymore. Uh, I've spoken on global stage regarding tech and non-technical stuff. Uh, I've led projects in machine learning and both in blockchain. Uh, done a lot of simulation work, and uh, in my free time, I'm an adjunct professor over at NTU. Uh, who does that, right? Like, so, so that's kind of like my hobby, teaching. So teaching is in my blood. Uh, I've well, I've spent many years teaching now, and um, I think only probably Marco recognizes me. Hey, Amen. So. Okay, I'm not going to talk about what FOSS is exactly, right, because, you know, it would be preaching to the choir. I'm going to show you a couple of memes, which I think feels like the most representative of the, the community, right? And so, um, I don't know, I feel like OSS is a very giving, it has a lot of heart, right? Um, it's a lot of thankless work sometimes, I feel, and uh, they get a lot of flag, but this is, this is great. Now, um, also another one of my favorite memes that I see. Okay, I'm not really a meme, la, but it's a, it's a comic, right? Like, it's... Uh, <laughs> I was telling someone that a lot of modern society wouldn't operate without OSS around. Like, if you take OSS out of the equation, I think society will kind of collapse. I think. I, th I feel. So, um, 
force is for everyone, right? Uh, be it for to play, to learn, or to do good. And I'm going to talk a bit about them quite briefly in each. So this is kind of like a breath kind of thing, right? Um, I'm not going to go too in depth into each part. So let's start off with play. So what does it mean by play, right? Play can mean many things. And here's a question for all of you. So what does ICPC, ICPC, right? The International Collegiate Programming Contest, um, CATIS, uh, and at, at code.jp have in common. So these are these are what you call uh, online judges, right? So uh, they're very popular in colleges where you uh, where you set it up, where you set a challenge up, and then the students come in and they work on it. A uh, wonderful thing about these uh, platforms is that it's it's open source. It's all open source. So if you actually want to run your own uh, contest, right? If you want to run your own challenge within your community. Right, you can always uh, grab the code and then run it within your community. So what I'm trying to say here is that, like, let's say if you want to engage your community, right, uh, you can use such platforms. Because to me, right, uh, when you, okay, so who who here likes challenges? Who here likes to like go for these coding contests? All right, okay, uh, okay, right, it's I don't usually get hands when I ask for it, but I still do it anyway. Um, right, engaging. Community engagement is a tricky thing, and you always need some kind of activities to 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 kind of like engage them, and yeah, having having these platforms are wonderful. Um, I mean, I'm wearing the lenses of a community manager, right? So if you have all these activities up, it's a lot easier to uh, keep them keep them engaged, keep them entertained, and also keep them upskilled as well, right? Play equals to education, and I think one thing that uh, that that's not really stated much is that there's a lot of learning by doing. Like personally, I strongly believe in learning by doing. Um, there's only so much you can do by watching videos and, and reading like tutorials on Medium or like on blogs and whatnot. Um, best part is you can modify it freely for your own community, right? Uh, so I've, yeah, I'm not gonna go down that path. It's like not enough time, right? So, um, how about learn? Actually, I'm gonna spend a bit more time on learn part, right? Because uh, do you know that in a in a kind of like in a computer science program, right? You spend around eight thousand years by the time you're done with your four years. Uh, it's kind of like a rough estimation. The numbers may seem a bit different for uh, some of you, and for a large part of uh, society, right? Uh, not everyone gets this number of hours of training, right? Of course, uh, this is based on the usual curriculum in a kind of like a university in a developed country, right? So in in countries with fewer resources, it's very hard for students to get uh, or developers to get this number of hours of training, right? So it's actually very easy to get left behind. Uh, let's say if you're a, a developer in a in a in a less equipped university, for example, right? Versus uh, say a uh, a student from the National University of Singapore, the differences in number of training can be quite large, right? Um, of course, okay, I, I guess I can explain a bit what goes into this calculation, right? Um, 130 credit hour module, each credit is 10 hours of work per week, you multiply it and you get somewhat close to 8,000 hours. So, um, and this is only for students from uh, CS programs. How about how about mid-career switches? How about those who come into get game a bit late, right? Uh, this is something that I I've been trying to solve for the past couple of years in my previous uh, startup and like well, I guess in my educational initiatives, right? But um, so that's why I always go back to like using hands-on learning as a way to close the gap between. Uh, where you are, where you are, and where you have to be, right? To be kind of like not on par, but to be to have the same kind of experience, right? Uh, as a regular developer who come out of a CS program. So um, I think okay, I just try, I try to keep this as general as possible, right? Because like I wasn't too sure 
who was in the audience. So for example, this could be streamed online to uh, aspiring aspiring developers out there. So, uh, but you know, in case you know, you're, a, you're a leader in your community or you are mentoring people, there are many things we can do today actually to close the gap and uh, OSS is kind of like the way to go, right? Um, I guess this list gets updated every year, but generally if you, the, the idea is to have this awareness that, hey, actually there are a lot of, of these programs out there that you can use. So I mean, Google Summer of Code is the most famous one, right? I mean, who, who hasn't heard of Summer of Code? Uh, people outside the community, that is. So um, Summer of Code, one thing, you get paired up with in, in open source organizations and then, you know, you, you get mentored over the summer, right? So, but um, if, Coding isn't your thing. That's also the summer of docu documentation, right? Because documentation is also something very important. Um, this this is also good because on top of training uh, developers, we should also be training a generation of uh, technical writers, right? Technical writers, those who can write and those who can code concurrently. Now, um, if this is also something useful, like for example, good first issue, right? This is what it does is that it, it kind of like collects the data from all the different uh, projects and identifies the good first issues, right? That beginners can work on. Uh, however, if you're in the web free space, we also have kind of like the equivalent in the web free space, right? Like let's say if you want to work on blockchain projects instead, uh, the, you can also head to places like uh, learnwebfree.xyz and uh, there's also an equivalent list of projects that you can contribute to. So I'm just gonna like skip, 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 skip. Okay, basically, uh, oh yeah, this kind of goes on what I wanted to say, right? If you're a senior, you should uh, opt to kind of like grab someone, mentor. I mean, it goes both ways, right? Because juniors sh shouldn't be too shy and like reach out to people for mentorship. Uh, finally, do good. Okay, this is another very like fast one, right? We do good. Why do we do good? Because there's the implication that this is bad. Okay. Uh, so um, in case this, in case you're not sure what uh, I'm showing, here's a quick TLDR about the what the whole open AI fiasco is about. Open AI is supposed to be open, but it's not open. Um, so it's kind of hard, right? Because AI, you, you see in the news, you have a lot of alarmists and everything. I'm just gonna like oversimplify it. But the idea is that um, the open source community, they are kind of like fighting back, right? Not fighting, fighting, but they are in response, right? They are working on their own open source versions. Uh, so here you have a crowdsource uh, data set, and then you also have something called ShareGPT, where they interact. So this is an extension that you can install in your Chrome browser, where you can just use uh, G uh, ChatGPT and then upload the conversations you have as training data for. Okay, wait. So so take note of ShareGPT, right? Now, a uh, quick landscape of how uh, large language models are like in the past three years. Even though there's been a lot of uh, models released, right? Uh, now, these days, we actually focus on the very narrow part of the LLM uh, development. So I just want to talk briefly about Yama. So Yama is a model released by Meta uh, or Facebook, right? And Stanford actually took that and uh, used ShareGPT's data to turn uh, Yama, a general purpose LLM, into something more equivalent and similar to ChatGPT called Alpaca. Uh, so I think we'll see a new generation of animal themed uh, name models. It's cute, right? You, we used to have things like Bert, and then you have Ernie, right? and the Sesame Street characters. Now we'll have animals. I love it. Um, and it's a, it's a constantly developing field, right? And the thing is like, where do we go next with regards to doing good uh, with open source? I actually don't know, but, but, here's a plug. If, if you wanna do good, um, I, <laughs> and heck, <laughs> so my colleagues are laughing right now. Uh, we were organizing something uh, called Hack Singapore it's a pretty large hackathon event. I encourage all of you to give it a try. Um, I believe it's virtual. Virtual? No, it's not virtual. It's, it's, it's the, the, the demo day is in person. 
right? Uh, but I think it's you know it's over a long period of time where you can build stuff to do good. So one of the themes over here is actually doing good, um, and that's something that we believe in. Uh, on top of that, we we have uh, things to help developers level up in on Discord. So two two major things that we're running right now. One is a monthly code challenge to again hands on train uh, hands on hands on uh, practice right to get better. This one is data visualization. Next month with algorithms. And um, the other one that we're doing is what we call a content bounty, where we encourage developers to write uh, technical technical content. So it could be code guides, could be anything. So it's kind of like while well, you learn, say in this particular case, it's Celo, right? Celo is just a, it's a stable coin. Um, it's a stable coin. Uh, okay, that, that itself is a separate conversation. But um, developers can then learn the Celo ecosystem and then write content about it. Okay, so anyways, uh, call to action. If either of it interests you, please join us on our Discord server and also check out our Hack SG website. Uh, if you can't catch the QR code in time, don't worry. We have a booth set up in the hall. Uh, feel free to swing by to chat. I'll be here all day. And on this note, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you organizers for having me. And yeah, have a good day ahead. <laughs>